data, 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 data. All right, this is going to be the one. Hi, so today we're going to be working on an iPhone 6S that was sent here for data recovery. This iPhone 6S came here all the way from Mexico. It says, the phone fell down and after that doesn't turn on. No power, no charging, nothing. We want to recover all photos from it at least. Thanks. I read like a kindergartner. So let's have a look at this thing. The first thing that we are going to do is remove the beloved pentalobe screws. Now, I just read to you everything that I know about this phone. So we all know the same amount about this phone. I, I know nothing more than you do. You know, randomly selecting phones for video has not always been the best idea. So we can tell a lot about a phone by how easy it is. And right away, this thing is feeling pretty easy. I'm not seeing any like bends or anything. So let's just go ahead and continue our venture. I'm going to assume that if this was shipped here all the way from Mexico, that somebody's already tried to connect a charger to it, so I haven't done... Oh, for the love of all things holy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Alright everybody, welcome to my world. Let's just see what we're up against. Are you kidding me? Seriously? Yes, this is this is my life, everybody. You You are now experiencing the life of Jason. All right, so the CPU shield has been thoroughly removed. We've got some, uh, we've got some scratching and stuff going on, on down here. Let's go ahead and look at this under the microscope. So here we're looking under the CPU shield that I did not remove. And I'm happy to see that the RAM looks pleasantly flat. The A9s, they get bulging RAM very easily whenever it comes to prior repair attempts. I don't see anything too gut-crunchingly alarming yet, except for, you know, possibly this inductor over here laying right smack dab on ground of that, you know, the this cable is just laying there on ground. <laughs> what the? Okay, um, let's go ahead, let's get the screen assembly disconnected. Yeah, I know I'm using a metal pry tool. All right, so the screen assembly is disconnected. Holy smokes, it looks like there has been more wanking going on than the back seats in a porn theater. Is this a no image phone? Are we booting with no image? I'm not hooking power to this yet. It looks like somebody was determined to do things to the display connector, right? I don't want to hook power to this just yet because I don't know exactly what all is going on. Oh god, we got the battery hooked up. Let's go ahead and fix that right away. So let's remove these creepy little screws down here. Oh, and let's disconnect the battery before I blow something sky high, shall we? Click, not that that battery is any good anyway. I mean, this thing looks like, this thing looks like hell. All right, let's go ahead and peck around on this with a meter. I'm gonna be using diode mode today. Let's put our red probe on ground and we're gonna put our black probe on something. And we are getting a 0.4. That is a normal reading for something. Let's see what else we get on something. We're getting a 0.4 on something. Now on something, we're getting a 0.38. These all, all these readings look good for something. Okay, we get another good reading. Another good reading. Another good reading. This is just, isn't this pleasant? We're getting all good readings. How about that? Watch this be a blown backlight filter. Uh-oh. We've got something that's not getting a reading. So let's count it out. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the eighth pin in that row. And if we have a look at flex board view, so we will count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mamba M-Sync. We're not worried about that one, are we? So it's not looking like uh, right away that we have a image related problem. You know, judging by all the uh, wankery we've got going on around the display connector, this I just automatically thought that we're gonna have like an image problem, but this is not image so far. Now on this side of the display connector, we do have something removed or knocked off. I wonder exactly what that component is going to be. Let's pay that some attention. So. In this situation, to identify this, I'm going to look at these components down here. We've got a couple of big fat thingies, 
And then we've got a handful of smaller thingies. And I'm going to count the smaller thingies. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five smaller thingies. And we are missing the sixth smaller thingy. Oh, and look what other look what else we got going on here with these thingies. I'm not sure if this will be clear enough for you all to see, but not only are we missing this thingy, but we are also missing, actually we are looking at this thingy over here being shattered. So let's look at the board view and we will count. Here is our two larger thingies and we will count one, two, three, four, five, six thingies, right? That is one of our SPI touch lines. And without this component, if we do get this thing to come up, we are not going to have any touch. Now, what else did we have going on here? We've got this component right behind it that was busted. This little, what looks like is a resistor is busted. And that is going to be proximity to touch, blah, 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 blah. So something to do with proximity and touch. We've got some screwy like touch related things going on here, but so far I've not found anything that really meets the description of not doing anything, not turning on. You know, I see, you know, I understand that it was dropped, but all of this other stuff that I'm running into, this stuff has nothing to do with being dropped. This is all stuff that's been screwed around with, you know, all right, let's go ahead and check the symptoms on this board. There's a chance that the problems are completely topside, like right here around the connector. I don't think so. It looks like this thing probably has a problem due to being dropped, and now it's got a bunch of problems due to wankery. Let's see what this thing is doing on a DC power supply, shall we? We're gonna hook up our power supply. And then we're going to turn the supply on and one, two, three, on. 10 milliamps of current looks really promising. Just to be on the safe side here, let's go ahead and connect a screen, you know, just so we can see what's happening with the image. All right, we are going to press the button to boot and one, two, three, boot. 70 milliamps, ugh. Oh, that's an ugly one. We got this 80 milliamp, 80 milliamp, 80 milliamp loopy thing going on. I really don't like those. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the board from this. There we go. So right away we can see that the bottom sticker has been removed and it has been replaced with this uh, piece of Kapton tape. I can see with my eyeballs that we've got some priage around the metal shield over here. Somebody has already cut a piece out of the metal shield over here. Now looking at this under the microscope, the only reason somebody would have cut this out like this is to check these two resistors right here. These two resistors, they are responsible for creating an I2C data and an I2C clock line. If either one of these resistors have a funky problem, you get this situation where it draws 80 milliamps dead, 80 milliamps dead, 80 milliamps dead. You have a situation where you got a phone that's doing exactly what this one is doing. And now I see that somebody has already covered these I2C lines. So let's see what other kind of wankery we have going on here. Let's get down, for whatever reason, it looks like this cap's been something or other. Was this no image and now it is uh, dead? What in the heck is going on here? Now, why would they pry up on this one? Any ideas why they would pry up on that? Let's just have a look at the board view. Why were they checking under that little piece of metal? Shall we see? Let's just zoom on out and have a look at that side of the board. Zoom right on in and what, what, what? We have I2C0, S-C-A-L-M-U-O-N. They were poking all around some I2ZZ, I2CZ stuff. Let's just get some diode mode readings off of this and uh, see what's going on here. We're gonna do red probe on ground. And we're gonna check this I2C line here, 0.38. I'm not gonna be surprised to see perfect readings on all of the I2C lines, because this is probably not gonna be an I2C problem. If it was an I2C problem, I suspect that the previous tech would have fixed this because they were sort of on the right track. Let's go ahead and peel up this bottom sticker and see what kind of madness that we have going on down here. Yep, 
It took a fall and then it didn't turn on. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and get it hooked to a power supply so that we can get some juice running through it. And we've got the power supply on. I'm going to go ahead and press the boot button so we can get some looping going on. There we go. 60 or so milliamps, dead. 70 milliamps, dead. Some small amount of power, dead. Small amount of power, dead. You get the point, right? We're going to switch the meter to volts mode and have a look at this steaming pile of hog manure under the microscope. I'm sorry, I know it's got somebody's data on it, but I get all the easy ones snagged from me, guys. Like, I, I want to find a faulty I2C line. Like, come on, please send me one with a bad I2C line. With a short on it. Just drop a solder ball on one of them. Just solder it straight to ground and send it to me. All right, DC volts. Are we still looping? Okay, so right now we are getting 80 milliamps dead 80 milliamps dead 80 milliamps dead and i am getting nothing for dc volts well am i just being a wine bag i'm like i just want one with the bad i2c line me, 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 me. and look i'm getting on this i2c line i'm getting zero i'm not getting any voltage on that i2c line so let's check the other one one of them is a data line one of them is a clock line and on the other side we are getting 1.8 so this I2C line 1.8, this I2C line over here, diddly squat. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna turn the power supply off. Now we're gonna switch this meter to ohms mode and I'm going to check that line for resistance mode to ground. So we've got this thing set on auto, right? Okay, so we'll put our black probe on ground and I'll put my red probe right here on this I2C line. And I'm getting 19,000 ohms. It's not, uh, I mean, it's not unacceptable. We're going to check that in diode mode now. So in diode mode, we will do red probe on ground. And I'm going to do black probe on the I2C line. 0.36 on the other side. 0.34. So they're dang near the same. So let's go ahead and have a look at the board view and see who and what these lines are. We need to see what creates them. So here we are. R0900, R0900, it comes directly off of PP1V8. It is a 1K resistor, and basically this 1K resistor creates I2C0 APSCL. This is a pull-up resistor. So if you have a look at the schematic for this, these are our pull-up resistors for our data lines and clock lines. So let's look at the one that we have in question, R0900. That's where we checked. That's where we're getting zero volts. That basically has PP1V8 coming directly to one side of it. And out the other side of it, you have I2C0 underscore AP underscore SCL. This is creating a clock line for I2C0. So the schematic says that resistor is supposed to be 1K. We're going to check that now in resistance mode. And I bet you it is not 1K. I bet it is blown sky high because it gets nothing and it's the only thing there. Look at this, 0.92K. We're getting 1,000 ohms across that resistor, yet we don't get any voltage. Okay, well, the only reason, the only thing that can cause that, since we don't have a short to ground, We've got normal resistance to ground. The only thing that can cause this is something that is screwed up. Something is pulling the voltage down. Let's find it. So, looking back at the board view, what all do we have on I2C0? Well, we've certainly got this chestnut IC that they were dicking with, don't we? We've got the main PMIC on I2C0. We've got the CPU on I2C0. Now, chestnut, it gets this line directly. Um, if we look at this, I2C0 underscore AP underscore SCL. It heads off up here to R4021. This is going to I2C0 under, underscore AP underscore SCL M-U-O-N. It's a moan. And if we track that, where is our moan going to? Our moan is going to the backlight driver. This leads me to believe that we have either a faulty PMIC, we have a faulty CPU, we have a faulty backlight driver, or we have a faulty chestnut IC. Now, these guys have already screwed with chestnut IC until they're blue in the face, it looks like. We might come back and readdress that. I would be quick to yank chestnut off of there if I had a short on that I2C line, but I don't have a short on that I2C line. 
which leads me to think that this is more likely to be the backlight driver. So what can we do here? Can we eliminate the backlight driver? Let's trace this back. So we're trying to eliminate I2C0 underscore AP underscore SCL. That CL means clock line. We need to disconnect that from the backlight driver. So up here on the back side of the board, we have this little thing here, R4021. If we look at the back of the board in that spot, remember we already had some pry action going on, huh? Now are we getting a better understanding as to why the last tech had been prying around on this? Okay. Oh, look, we pulled that up and look at what we have under here, fellas. We have probe marks on that little thing. We don't care about those probe marks now, do we? Because we don't care about this component anymore. Ugh. Let's go ahead and get some flux on it. We need to disconnect this line from that backlight driver. Wait a minute, what is this thing? Is it? Oh, that's also a 1K resistor. I don't think this is going to do it, guys, but let's do it anyways. I was hoping this was a lower resistance thing. This is another 1,000 ohms. Um, and we're getting a really, really low reading on this I2C line. So let's disconnect this backlight driver. To do that, I'm just going to get me a blob of leaded solder on my arm. And we're going to touch it. Go. Come on, baby. There we go. So now we have res removed this 1000 ohm resistor. And what I would like to see now with that gone, if we get any voltage on our I2C0 clock line. So now we're going to power it back on. We're draw not drawing any current. I've pushed the button to boot. We get 700 milliamps. Let's go ahead and check this line now. We're going to check this line for voltage. So with our supply looping and carrying on, we'll just check right here for voltage. and I still get absolutely nothing. Gosh, am I looking at something wrong? We've checked this resistor. It's got, you know, it's, it's a 1000 ohm resistor and it has PP1V8 like right on it. So if we check right here on this side of it, there's PP1V8, you know, clear as day. But if we check on this side of it, I'm getting zero. And also if I check on that side of it, I'm not getting any shorts to ground. So. Is this resistor bad? It doesn't look like they replaced the resistor, right? And the resistor by far does not look bad. Let's go ahead and pull this chestnut IC off of here. I just, I really, really don't trust these guys. I hate to do it because I have to put it back on to get data. All right, let's turn the supply off and let's now go ahead and remove chestnut. I'm starting to think, you know, we've got all this action going on around the display connector and we've got all this action going on around chestnut and all of a sudden I got a board that's 80 milliamps boot looping brain dead. I'm really thinking that this started with no image and maybe they botched it with chestnut, but they were smart enough to carve out the shield and check the I2C lines, right? Let's check this chestnut IC anyway. They were also clumsy enough to gouge stuff off the board. So let's go ahead and remove their chestnut IC. Gradually warming this up. I'm just going to grab it right here if I can. God bless the last tech for using lead-free solder. I'm going to say this chestnut IC doesn't feel like it's been off here before. Or at least if it has, they used leaded solder on it. All right, let me get a good grip on it and see if I can't pick it up out of here. Oops. You didn't see all that, mon that, all that madness. Oh, what have we got here? Ooh. Well, we've got a second clumsy tech, only this clumsy tech 
I just found a solder bridge. Let's just look and see what we have bridged. We've got these two bridged and that's it. At first it looked like these were bridged, but they're not. So we have these two right here bridged. Let's look and see what those are. So having a look now at the board view, we have I2C0 APSCL, our line that's dropping to zero volts. And then we also have PP5V7 LCN Mason AVDD. So basically the chip that we just removed, that is the display driver. That is the power supply for all things display. This is what gives us the 5.7 volt lines that light up the display. This is what does all good things. So whenever we have one of its main data communication lines essentially down, it was not shorted to ground. It was shorted to this 5v7 Mason line, actually shorted to one of its own outputs, which would explain why it's sitting there not having any trouble until it attempts to power on and then we have no more data communication. So this is going to be why the phone is not powering on, but it is not going to be why they were having issues with image and it's not going to be why we're not going to get any touch. So let's fix all of those things so that I can get this guy's data. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this goofy little solder bridge here. I'll just get a little bit of, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's got enough flux on it. So let's just give it a little, a little dabby, give it a little tappy. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to clean up this whole entire area because I'm now I'm fairly confident we're getting data. So let's just get this ready for a chip because we can't get data without this chip. We won't get an image on the screen. Hmm, maybe I should have put like Rossman amounts of flux on it. There we go. Let's use Rossman amounts of flux. That's better. And I've still got it hooked up to my power supply, so it's not so easy to flip it around here. That looks pretty good. We will take it. Now, with that all cleaned up and ready to have a new IC snuggled up on there, let's go ahead, let's cool the board off. Also inspecting to make sure we don't have any domes forming on top of the CPU. And now that we have that board fairly well cooled off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the supply on and we're gonna prompt it to boot. One, two, three, boot. 100 milliamps, 140, 130, this thing is Booting, we got 280, and I'll show you now on that line that now that we've removed our chest nat IC, if we check for voltage on our I2C clock line now, we are getting 1.8 volts. All right, so it looks like this phone is now booting, but we don't have a chestnut IC on the board, so it's not gonna give us any image power. It's not gonna have any display. We know that we have removed that little moan resistor that connects the clock line to the backlight driver. So if we want backlight, we're gonna have to hook that back up. We don't really need it for data. And also we've got the components that are broken next to the connector. That's gonna give us trouble with um, touch and also looks like possibly proximity. All right, so let's grab us a brand spanking new chestnut IC off of this board. So what do you think the reason is this phone had no image, guys? Somebody apparently thought it was booting with no image and then created a problem while they were troubleshooting, right? Let's throw some new balls on it. We're going to add some flux. And I'm going to hover me a blob of leaded solder all over it. There we go. It's just marvelous. Now let's get us a stencil on there. It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be the right stencil. It just kind of has to be a close enough stencil. Ooh, baby. Let's just get us a little blob of solder. There we are. And let's start warming this up. These are the easy ones. He says just before botching it. 
here we go. We've got some nice symmetrical non-hairy leaded balls. All right, let's get this new IC on the board, our brand spanking new IC. Now, I don't remember exactly which way that was facing, so I'm going to have a look at the board view. On the board view, we are looking for this discolored pin up here. We're looking for pin A1. Pin A1 represents the orientation of our dot. So if you look at the top of this chip, it's going to have a dot on it. There we go. So this is going to sit in here just like this with that dot facing the top right hand corner of our work piece here. Now I'm going to add some fresh flux. Try not to use too much because I don't want this to bubble and go all crazy and be the next guy to create a bridge. So we're going to try to solder this on here and also fix the chaos that I created whenever I took it off. Now it had lead free solder under it and now it's got leaded so it will be a little bit at least a little bit easier. So here we go let's start warming this up. And trying to get it to line up. It's probably close enough right there. Let's get it to bubble a little. There we go. Now I'm going to let go and try to get it to stay in place. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's just marvelous. All right, now I'm going to continue to warm this up and get it to fall down on the board. It should fall first, and then I'll straighten up these other components that I messed around with. There we go. Oh, that was nice. All right, let's move this cap back over. And I don't like this bridge here. Let's try to get rid of that. go and then I've created this bridge here Let's get rid of that there we go so all that stuff there should be happy now if we plan on having working backlight we're gonna get uh, we're gonna need to replace this little moan resistor up here let's just go ahead and grab that off of a donor we're gonna take this thing and just fold that up like that and then I'm going to grab a hold of that little thing with hot air. Let's just grab us a 1K resistor out of there, shall we? There we go. Drop that right there on the customer's board. There we go. That should allow the backlight to light up. Now let's see what we can do about touch. We know that without this inductor right here in place, we are not, absolutely not, going to have working touch. For the purpose of getting the data off of this phone and not repair, I'm not going to put a filter in here just yet. I am only going to put in a wire. Let's get a little piece of jumper wire. This is iPhone 6 ear speaker wire. I live on this stuff. I eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's get us a little flux on this wire and then a little flux down in there. There we go. There we go. Now I'm going to tend the wire and see if we can just bridge this little gap here with it. Good enough. Oops. All right, let's do that once more on the other side. It's in a little bit of an awkward spot to get to, but we'll get it. Good enough, we'll take it. 
Okay, so we have fixed the bridge under the under the display driver. We have replaced the display driver with a brand spanking new display driver. I have put back the resistor that I took off to sever away the backlight driver, and now I have reconnected a line that I believe that we need for touch. So let us see if this thing is in a condition that we need for data. I'm gonna go ahead and slip it right back into the customer's housing. And we've got that little bracket bent up, so it, uh, it's a little bit more tricky. So there we've got it in the housing. And now I'm going to connect their display to it to see if this thing will light up for us. All right, and now we're looking to see if we've got working image. Touch, hopefully backlight. We don't really need it. And here we go. We're going to press the button to boot in one, two, three. Boot. Yay! Woo woo! Half a logo. Half a logo. Yeah, half a logo. Dun 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 dun. We need to see that we have working touch. Any minute. The moment of truth. Any minute. Come on, don't lock up on the Apple logo. Please don't lock up on the Apple logo. All right, we're up to a passcode screen. Let's press emergency. And there we go, we have working image and touch. Okay, so we have this thing up and running with working image, touch, backlight, we have everything that we need for data recovery except for the passcode. So I'm going to be putting this thing aside and waiting for a, re a response from the customer. And once I get the passcode, I'll get it hooked up and get their backup finished. So anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. I do thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Have a good day.